Grover Cleveland, the 22nd and 24th president. Grover Cleveland served as the 22nd and 24th president of the United States. That's right, he's the only president to serve two non-consecutive terms. He was also the only Democrat nominated during the Republican-dominated time in the White House, which began with Lincoln in 1860 and ended with Taft in 1913. Cleveland was born in 1837, and before becoming president, he worked as a teacher for the blind, a lawyer, a sheriff, a mayor, and finally the governor of New York. Now, Cleveland lived during the time of the Civil War, but he did not actually fight in the Civil War, something that would come up during his election. Now, he did this legally through the Conscription Act. He hired a Polish immigrant to serve in the war for him. When Cleveland was first nominated in 1885, he considered himself to be a watchdog over Congress. So he used the presidential veto 414 times in his first term alone on congressional bills. And that's more than any president who has served before him. He also fought to have protective tariffs lowered during his first term, and this is one of the reasons he lost his run for re-election in 1888. A lot of the Northeast industrial states, including his own state of New York, considered these tariffs to be threatening to their jobs. Now, despite losing his run for re-election in that term, he did run again in 1892, this time winning and becoming the 24th president of the United States. Now, the beginning of his second term started with a nationwide disaster, the Panic of 1893. There were railroad bankruptcies, bank failures, a credit crisis, a stock market crash, and this devastated the economy for the majority of his term. It would begin to recover in 1896 with the Klondike Gold Rush. Now, Cleveland's presidencies are highlighted by his strengthening the executive branch of the federal government, namely in how it related to the congressional branch. Remember the 414 vetoes? His social policies, though, were generally considered to be inconsistent and not innovative. Despite this, the Democratic Party did ask him to run for a third term, something that was legal at the time, but Cleveland declined. At the end of his second term, he moved to New Jersey and served as a trustee at Princeton University until his death in 1908. 